the age discrimination thing is fascinating to me because it comes up a lot with the people I work with. I work with folks who are going through boot camps at every age, like high school all the way up to, you know, 60. And yes, it comes up all the time. And it's, it's a really tough one because on the one hand, it's like, there is going to be age discrimination that we have to deal with. And I'm not, I would never deny any of these things, right? As much as I'm going to, in this episode, we're being hard on the job seeker in 90% of our episodes, we're being hard on the companies. And like, I feel like we're being hard on misinformation. Yes. Okay. That's a really good breakdown of it. And like, I think, I think with the age discrimination thing, it's like, yes, age discrimination is a thing. Yes. It's unfair. Also, and this is where it's like, yes, and I think yes, and is such a great phrase. It's like, and I have worked with people who wanted to be in market, a marketing communications director who couldn't figure out Zoom. And it took me an hour and a half to teach them how to use Zoom. And I've been on calls with people who can't figure out Slack. And I've been on calls. And it's not to say like, that's making them a bad person. It's just like, at, at a certain point, my grandpa was like, computers came out and he was like, I'm just not going to do that. And he was typing yes. up, uh, he was typing up leases for the apartments that he owned on a typewriter in 2000. Oh my gosh. And like, wow, exactly. And like, he just said, I'm not, I'm going to skip that technology. And those kinds of mindsets are what create the bias Right. That people then Whether apply it's to true everyone. or not. True or not. Right. Right. But it's you just need one example of a coworker or a manager who like couldn't figure out email for that bias to get stuck in your head. Right. And so what I try and teach people is like instead of being upset about this, right? Because you could get upset about it. You could go create a blog called Ageism is the worst and like right. make your whole Put life nasty about, comments online and <laughs> right. And just collect screenshots and like mire yourself in this world of ageism being the worst thing in the world and maybe even make money off it. I don't know. I mean, if you want to do that, go for it. But like, (laughs) and then just tell everyone you should stop being ageist. And it's like, okay, but like, it's there. So what do we do about it? And I'm like, you can literally change the way you talk in an interview to remove the bias, to address it. And control the conversation. And control the conversation. So like, if you say like, oh yeah, I love using Slack. I'm on Discord and I you know, create YouTube videos, no one's going to have an ageism issue with you in that right. case, because you've preempted it. I mean, it might come up in other ways. There's no perfect solution here, but, um, but there are definitely things that you can do infuse in your content, infuse in your conversations to offset that preconceived notion. Absolutely. Exactly. exactly. And young then, and uh, old. Well, and then the next narrative that comes up is why is that onus on me? Right. Why is it on me? To have to change myself to everyone else's bad opinions and bad well, biases. So to an extent though, it's human nature, right? Like everybody wants to hang out with work with basically idealized versions of themselves, whoever you are, wherever you are, whether we admit it or not, that's what we're doing. So when we find out this is why it's so important to find out the company culture. This is why it's so important to find, to really diagnose those job descriptions, to see exactly what kind of personality clues they're giving us Mm -hmm. in, in that and say, this aligns with what, where I thrive or me trying to act like this all day, every day would wear me into the ground Mm -hmm. and I cannot physically do it, or I can make it work because most of the role is something that I want to do. So, and it's true for young job seekers. It's true for old job seekers that there are these impressions and they kind of, you know, even for the sake of ROI that we were talking about from a hiring standpoint, the middle ground is where they get the most value, right? You, you are professionally polished. You don't take as much time to ramp up. You know how to interact with customers. Your skill sets are enough that you could, even if you don't understand research enough to figure it out, right? Whether as if we're too young, we're making a lot of, of missteps. We're not confident. We're asking everybody for help and reinforcement. And then, like you said, on the, on the later end, we might be overconfident. We might not be changing with the times we might be even in an interview setting. A lot of people who have great accomplishments in their work history 
they'll focus on that instead of focusing on the value that they can offer the organization. So they're really looking back the whole time and never looking forward, still never trying to help out the company. Because really, anytime an organization is hiring, they're sending out an SOS, right? I need help. I'm buried. (laughs) And they need somebody to say, listen, I don't have a whole lot of problems and I'm going to solve your problems. (laughs) So then it becomes the point, if I do have issues, right? When do I address that? Or when do I deal with that? And then it becomes apparent, you know, do you, as much as you can to offset it proactively, either by really careful use of adjectives, right? Like if they're concerned that you're an older candidate, you might wanna say things like, I'm versatile, I'm adaptable, I'm a quick learner. Show it by having joined some organizations, be networking, not just resting on your laurels and being like, oh, all my references are retired. Um, getting any new tech skills, showing on your LinkedIn profile that you're not writing it like a third person bio from the 1980s, using first person, <laughs> actually commenting, supporting other people. There are really active ways to do this, to demonstrate it. And then when you are in the interview, those are the things that they're going to talk about. They're going to talk about your credentials. They're going to talk about this. They're not just going to be sitting back and be like, hmm, I don't know if Tina's going to know how to use the copier. 